The ending of the original Blade Runner has been hotly debated by fans for years. A combination of vague hints from director Ridley Scott and all kinds of studio meddling resulted in viewers being split on just what we were supposed to pull from the end of the 1982 sci-fi film. And now that Denis Veneuve's Blade Runner 2049 has arrived, there's plenty more dystopian ambiguity for viewers to pick apart for years to come. Here are our best guesses and interpretations as to what exactly, probably, the ending of the film really meant and where the franchise might go from here, or if it'll go anywhere at all. And it should go without saying, major spoilers ahead. Decoy Boy There's a lot in Blade Runner 2049 that simply goes unsaid, meaning that untangling and unpacking some of the plot's details and revelations is going to be a little fuzzy, just like the original. But one thing seems pretty clear by the time the credits roll. Ryan Gosling's character Kay is the decoy replicant made of Deckard and Rachel's daughter Anna. We can glean from the clues Kay follows throughout the story that there is a decoy, and before the big revelation near the end, we're meant to think that the decoy was a girl and was dead. Sure, the leader of the Replicant Rebellion, Freza, never points her finger at Kay and says, You, guy with the weird face, you're definitely the Replicant decoy. Still, we can piece together just enough information to know who Kay is and what role he was always meant to play. Kay was implanted with Anna's memory of the wooden horse and the orphanage, so if anyone followed the clues to find the missing baby, they'd end up finding Kay, the boy that was listed as alive. Genuine Joy Blade Runner's whole shtick has always been asking about what it means to be human. What defines life? Is a person a person only if he or she comes from the standard baby-making procedures? Are we more than the sum of our biology? But in all the excitement of meeting Kay, unearthing Deckard in Vegas and lots of punching in the rain, one character's journey into humanity should definitely not be overlooked. Joy, played by Ana de Armas, is Kay's holographic girlfriend an artificial intelligence he bought from the big robot store. As the story progresses, we see Joy transform into a true companion for Kay, who even says she loves him right before her death. You have to go. I'm coming with you. Later on, Kay sees an advertisement for Joy, and he starts to doubt whether or not she and her feelings were ever real at all. And those are the very same kinds of questions he's asking about himself. Both movies ask us to take Kay and the other replicants' quest for humanity and personhood as something that's plausibly attainable despite the fact that they're made in a factory and implanted with memories and programmed. And if we do, then we have to also believe that Joy is capable of the same growth as an actual person, regardless of whether or not she's got an actual body. What's in a name? It's impossible to look at the names of two of Blade Runner 2049's most prominent female characters, Joy and Love, and not see them as highly symbolic. Joy was something that Kay longed for and could only find as a prepackaged product that he could buy. Ultimately, Joy was something he could only see and hear, but never actually touch. And by the end, his joy is crushed by love. And love, as we see throughout the film, is both beautiful and cruel. By the end, Kay literally grapples with love and drowns her, all to save Deckard and reunite him with his daughter. For Deckard's love to live, he has to destroy love himself. The Deckard Question If you thought Blade Runner 2049 would settle the Deckard debate once and for all, well, think again. In terms of the original Blade Runner, director Ridley Scott says Deckard is a replicant, while actor Harrison Ford says he isn't. And even though the various non-theatrical cuts of the film heavily imply that Deckard's memories are implants, we're never told for sure. Well, we don't find out in Blade Runner 2049 either. But there are plenty of insinuations and implications that let viewers speculate. For instance, Deckard tells Kay, We were being hunted. That certainly implies that they were two rogue skin jobs on the run. But the fact that he loved Rachel and then went and fathered her robo-baby is also enough to make anyone, replicant, human, or otherwise, stay in hiding. Wallace, too, suggests that Deckard was programmed to meet and fall in love with Rachel so they could create a baby together. But we never get confirmation that this was what happened in the original movie, and we're left to keep speculating. But it's better that we don't know for sure whether Deckard is a replicant. After all, the main point of these films is to ask the question of what it means to be human, right? It's not really necessary to be told about Deckard's origins. It's far more interesting and symbolically effective to leave it ambiguous. In fact, answering the question would kind of ruin the movie, wouldn't it? Another sequel? They replicant resist. If this latest sequel performs well, and its excellent reviews seem to indicate it will, there's no reason to think the studio won't hop to work on making a third movie. One of the best aspects of this film was the way it continued to build the world we only saw hints of in Ridley Scott's original. And leaving Deckard and his daughter Anna alive at the end of the film means Wallace could still find and capture them for his nefarious ends. 
Plus, we've got a whole Replicant Rebellion waiting to kick off. Better reserve your ticket for Blade Runner 3 Revenge of the Replicants now before they sell out. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love too.